Professor Everett, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much, Sam, for having me. It's great to be here. So we're talking about post-operative delirium. Could you maybe just start by explaining what it is? Sure. So post-operative delirium is something that happens uh, in the acute time after anaesthesia and surgery. It's an inattention, uh, inability to solve complex problems, often with a, an altered state of consciousness and sometimes with agitation. So some patients are hypoactive, which is the most common form, which is a very sleepy state. And um, some patients do have some agitation, but that's not the most common form. And how long after surgery um, is this appearing or becoming a clinical issue? Most commonly it's uh, on the first or second day post-operatively, but it can occur in the initial instance even at five days post-operatively. Generally it resolves in the short term, but then we know there are long-term complications associated with having an episode in that short period after um, surgery. And are there any particular types of surgery or, or anaesthetics that are more likely to bring these on? So we know that um, cardiac surgery, for example, has a higher incidence of post-operative delirium. And we know that the long-term cognitive impairments and increase in mortality occur regardless of, of what type of anaesthesia and surgery the patient has experienced. And what's the current approach then to diagnosis, prevention and, and treatment of post-operative delirium? So at the moment, really the only strategies are non-pharmacological interventions to prevent delirium. So making sure patients have, are oriented as soon as possible after their anaesthesia and surgery, after they emerge, uh, making sure they have their sensory aids, so give them their glasses, their hearing aids, their teeth, make them feel oriented to their surroundings and uh, reducing polypharmacy as much as we can. And just finally, where do you think the research is going? There's a lot of work being done globally looking at biomarkers. So blood biomarkers, we now have really sensitive assays, which we didn't have five years ago, looking at both inflammatory biomarkers because it looks to be some sort of neuroinflammation certainly is part of what's driving this, but also neuronal damage biomarkers akin to what we see with Alzheimer's disease and other related dementias. So that's the really exciting area where hopefully we'll get to understand the pathophysiology of delirium and ultimately be able to implement preventive strategies. Professor Everett, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Sam. It's great to be here.